you're stupid, you're dumb, you'll never amount to anything. And I was eight, and I honestly, I didn't know how to process that. I began to believe lies about who I was and how I fit into the world. My dad was my hero. He was the kind of man that you wanted to be your best for. And I felt in his shadow I could do or be anything. And I felt loved and accepted. I remember the, the night that uh, the, 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 the priest from the local parish came and knocked on our door. And I, I remember it because I remember the sound that my mom made. And it, it still haunts me to this day. It was a shriek, a horror. Because all of a sudden our world completely turned inside out literally in one day. What happened within a year is mom remarried, um, mostly out of necessity. And the man that she hooked up with, he wasn't, he wasn't anything like my father at all. In fact, he couldn't have been more opposite to my dad. He was, um, he was a violent, abusive alcoholic. And so I went from a message of you're loved and you can do and be anything to you're stupid, you're dumb, you'll never amount to anything. And I was eight, and I honestly, I didn't know how to process that. I began to believe lies about who I was and how I fit into the world. By the time I was 15 years old, I was non-compliant at home. I, I grew an extra two feet, which was really good for me, but not so good for my stepfather. <laughs> And uh, so there was, there was a lot of tension between him and I, and he paid the bills, so I had to go. At 15 years old, I was on my own. At 16 years old, I began getting in trouble with the legal system. I remember going back out to the street, completely broken as a human being, walking up East Hastings with the pouring rain. And I said to myself, how did I get here? I'm a good kid from a good family. How did I end up in this much trouble? What ended up happening is, I remember uh, this, the day, it was a beautiful sunny day just like today. See, back in those days, I was, um, I was a liar, a thief, a cheat, and a mooch. And I saddled up beside this guy sitting at a bus stop named Gus because he had a cigarette. And he gave me a cigarette, he was a really nice guy. And he gave me a couple bucks too. But he gave me something more. The entire time I was sitting there talking to him, Gus said to me, he says, you know, Joe, he says, there's more to you than you can see. He said, but life is, you know, it's, it's kind of dirtied your windows and so the light doesn't get in and your light doesn't get out. He says, if you were to ever get yourself clean and sober, you could go on to do extraordinary things because you're a real bright guy. I remember when he was talking to me and he was speaking his truth into my life, I was looking over my shoulder for someone else because what stood before him did not align with his words. But he said to me, he said, there's more to you than you can see. And I remember my heart absolutely sank. For years of my life, I didn't take accountability for my own actions. I blamed society, I blamed my stepfather, I blamed everybody else except me. And that, that kept me from actually taking responsibility for my own behavior in my own life. It deflected it. But on that moment, the miracle happened for me. And the miracle was that I became teachable. I became pliable. And I became willing to do just about anything. You know, one of the things that I know today is that discontentment is the catalyst of change. And what I mean by that, it's oftentimes not until we're, we're backed into a corner where we become teachable, where we become willing to do something different. But you see, possibility always exists. It never goes away. It's always present. Even at my lowest point on the 100 block of East Hastings, the possibility of transformation was there. You never know how far you can go until you absolutely empty the tank. I believe that the tragedy of life is not that it ends too soon, but that we wait too long to begin because we're afraid. That each one of us in our own way have our lives colored by barriers that they're self-imposed that, that, that simply reside between our ears and they're not true it's an illusion but we let that illusion keep us back and i started to flower i started to come out and i started to do incredibly well 
I went from a kid pushing a shopping cart around the downtown east side of Vancouver to being on the cover of Canadian business. It's inside every single one of us is infinite possibility.